Now, this session, talking more about the nature of definitions and theorems and proofs, because uh, this is absolutely basic to this course, uh, which is very mathematical, and uh, proofs, and theorems, definitions, stuff like that. Uh, the very core, you know, absolutely basic to pure mathematics. Now, uh, just just to make a point, I have here a textbook of a senior master's M1, uh, so the same level as this course actually, a, senior, a, com a combined senior level uh, M1, you know, first year master's level course, but uh, not on uh, theory of computation, but on abstract algebra. Uh, groups, rings, fields, and some Galois theory. Now, if you don't know what they are, don't worry. But it's pure math, right? And uh, what, what I'm about to do is just to make the point to show you uh, vividly how essential to pure mathematics um, definitions and theorem, theorem statements and proofs are to pure math. Now, so I'll, I'll, I'll take this book and I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just open it at some random page, okay? And uh, oh, we've got exercise, <laughs> that should help. Now, it's a textbook, right? So there'll be lots of examples. So um, probably four or five uh, labels I'll be reading out uh, of the form, uh, theorem, proof, definition, uh, but example keeps cropping up a lot because you know, it is a textbook. But um, th the point I'm trying to make is uh, you will see uh, like page after page of uh, you know, the, the headings, like a, a paragraph, well here, and I'm, I'm on page 192 of this text. and. So I'll just read out like the section headings and you just see how fundamental uh, definitions, theorems, proofs are to pure mathematics. Like example, theorem, proof, example, definition, example, example, theorem, proof, theorem, proof, example, definition, example, definition, example, and then a whole bunch of um, exa um, exercises. Uh, definition, example, theorem, proof, example, 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 theorem, proof, definition, theorem, proof, definition, theorem, proof, example, a bunch of exercises, theorem, proof, proof, and why twice? Oh, corollary. Ah, all right, there's a new term, corollary. Now we'll, we'll talk about that this session. A corollary is sort of a it's a, it's a sort of a theorem that follows from a previous theorem, and it follows very easily from, from that previous theorem. And what's a theorem? Uh, it's a theorem statement, it's a mathematical statement that has been proved. So, uh, some mathematical statement that has not yet been proved would usually be called a, a conjecture. You know, um, in other words, a statement that you think might be true. Uh, and, but until it's proven, you know, the tight logical uh, deductive proof that it's that it's true, then uh, you can't call it, you cannot call it a theorem. Right? So a theorem is a mathematical statement that has been proved. Right? That's 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 a theorem. So anyway, theorem proof corollary, and the corollary has a proof. Usually, the proofs are fairly easy uh, after you've done the preceding main proof of a preceding theorem statement. Example, 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 example. Theorem. Lemma. Okay, here's another term. What's a lemma? Well, a lemma is sort of like a, a L-E-M-M-A, lemma. A lemma is a sort of mini-proof that's preparatory, that, uh, that you will use, you'll use its result, you'll use uh, the proven statement of the lemma, uh, as, as a preliminary mini result in some later, bigger, more significant uh, proof of, of some uh, more significant uh, 
theorem statement. Okay. So uh, quite often, you'll, you'll of, often uh, pure mathematicians will uh, write out uh, like a whole bunch of lemmas uh, in preparation for their big proof, like the big punch coming at, at the end. Um, once they've got all these uh, preliminary results ready uh, for the big hit. And so you'll have like lemma one, lemma two, dot dot dot, lemma n, and then proof. You know, the, the, the main theorem, the theorem statement and the proof, and it uses all these lemmas, you know, the results. So a lemma is sort of a preparatory mini uh, proof for used in a big, a bigger theorem, right? So uh, lemma proof, lemma proof, theorem proof, okay? So, uh, so there were two lemmas there uh, that were used in the later, more significant theorem that follow. Example, theorem proof. Example, lemma, no proof. Theorem proof, okay, you, you get the point, okay? <laughs> I can go on and on, and it, like I say, pages after page after page, it's, pure math texts are like that, right? So, uh, definitions, uh, proof statements, proof, uh, uh, the bread and butter of pure mathematics. Okay, so uh, you know, I hope, <laughs> I hope that uh, I drove that point home uh, emotionally, because uh, um, that's the nature of math. And uh, in time, as we get into this course more and more, and what, what will I do? Just okay, I'll take a, I'll take. Now, here's here's, here's the text we're using for this course. I will now take like a random page towards the back of the course and uh, now, like I've been saying quite a bit, um, theory computation gets very pure math like. Yeah? So I'm now on page, now it's 420 odd pages in this text, I'm on page 344, just randomly chosen, well towards the end. Uh, okay, corollary definition example. Theorem, proof idea, proof, corollary, 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 definition, theorem, proof idea, proof, Ooh, pages of it, okay, uh, definition, example, example, theorem, proof idea, proof, example, definition, 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 example, theorem, proof idea, proof, Okay, it's almost the same, right? So uh, expect that, right? So I hope it, now, if you like pure math, uh, I think you'll like theory of computation. If you hate pure math, uh, I'd get out of this course <laughs> while well, you can. All right. Okay. Uh, so a few sort of remarks um, when you're making. Proofs of a when you're setting up definitions and making theorem statements, precision is very important in pure mathematics. You you need to get rid of ambi ambiguity. You need to know what it is that uh, like when you're defining something, you need to know to be very clear on what it is and what it's not. You, do, you don't want ambiguity. Right? Uh, mathematicians hate ambiguity, and and they they tend to be rather critical of uh, physicists and non-mathematicians uh, because the latter tend to be, well, from the point of view of the pure mathematicians, rather sloppy, uh, not precise in, uh, in terms of you know, definitions and concepts and so on. So um, uh, mathematicians are very particular about that, right? Because uh, that's, what, that's what they do, right? They prove things. Well, they, well the creative side of uh, pure mathematics is uh, you know, when you're trying to prove stuff, uh, prove what? Well, you have, you have to have the what that you're trying to prove. You have to have ideas. So you're, you're talking about um, so-called objects, like they're things in mathematics, you know, mathematical entities, whatever, I'm being quite vague here. And, and they tend to have certain properties, and then uh, the creativity, the genius of the research pure mathematician will start speculating, well, this particular mathematical object 
might have this property or that property, you know, and that's intuitive usually. And so uh, the so he it's nearly always a he because uh, you know the genii mathematicians are virtually exclusively uh, male. That's just a consequence of GMV greater male variance. Uh, males have a 10% higher uh, IQ variance in the statistical sense uh, than females. And if you're a genius, uh, pure mathematician researcher, uh, the odds are very much against you uh, achieving that level if you're female, because it, uh, you know, the, the probabilities are against you, because women have a 10% smaller IQ variance. So the morons at the extreme left-hand end of the bell curve will be male, almost exclusively male, and similarly at the top right-hand end, uh, at the genius end in pure math, uh, will be uh, male. So uh, you know, virtually any pure math text, I mean, you'll you'll hardly get a female get a mention. But the only f world-class female pure mathematician I can think of is uh, the German, or German-American, well, German, um, woman, uh, Emmy Noto, N-O, umla, like two dots over the O, T-H-E-R, Noto. Uh, now, she's truly world-class, but she's the only one I can think of. Uh, she made major contributions to uh, abstract algebra, uh, ring theory, you know, the so-called Noto's rings, and I, I'll be teaching that as a second year master's level of course on uh, ring theory. Uh, anyway, so I'm getting a bit distracted. So, so pure mathematicians, they, the creative side is uh, dreaming up the nature of objects, these mathematical objects, dreaming up possibly what properties they might have, so that, that becomes conjecture, you know, maybe this, maybe that, and then uh, once things are clarified a bit in their head and they think they know what they're talking about, they, they have an idea of, you know, things at first are very vague, right? You're just sniffing around, exploring stuff, asking lots of questions. But uh, as the, you know, the ideas that you're talking about become clearer, uh, you start talking about mathematical objects and uh, you suspect that these mathematical objects, whatever they are, uh, have certain properties, and then once things are clarified to that extent, then you can start proving things you know, rigorously. Well, you know, they do have this property or that property, and here's the proof you know, that, it, that it is true, da -da 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 -da. You, and you write out the proof. So, um, so, so that uh, it's clear to other people, uh, you know, your, your definitions, your, uh, the nature of your proof and so on has to be clear and precise, uh, rigorous. Right? That's that's the nature of, of, of math. Okay. So when, you know, once you've defined you know, your mathematical objects, you know, whatever they are, I don't know quaternions, complex numbers, integrals, differentials, you know, whatever whatever it is, mathematical thing that you're talking about, you know, your mathematical objects. And notions, they're sort of ideas, like the concept of uh, another, you know, concept of a limit, uh, whatever. Okay, <laughs> it, it, it's hard to be. You know, this, this is very, very vague in general. Okay. Uh, so w once once you've defined your terms, so to speak, then usually the next step is you start making mathematical statement statements about those terms, like you give them certain properties. You know, usually you know, uh, these, these mathematical objects, whatever, will have